and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right we have a Wild Eversharp and this is in the wild. We have a Wild Eversharp in the Positano Blue. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. We have a Danny Trio, and this is the Bamboo Story. We have a Twisby Vac 700R in the Iris. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the Calsecchi. We have a Santini Italia Libra in the Ambra. We have a Santini Italia Libra in the Lowell. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. And we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So I think let's take a look at these pens a little bit more detail here. So this is the Wild Eversharp Deco Band. And this is a uh, Chatterley Luxuries exclusive. And uh, this is in the wild side or in the wild. This is a celluloid material and this was the black friday 2020 sale and i decided i just had to pick this up uh there were i think two versions there was a rose gold version trim and then there was the the black ruthenium trim and i honestly uh, i i don't go with a black ruthenium trim much i do typically go with a yellow gold or a rose gold but I honestly thought that this looked much better in a ruthenium trim I think it just really makes the black look more darker so this was the Chatterley Luxuries exclusive and you can see here this uh, again has a ruthenium plated nib it's an 18 karat gold magic flex nib and I picked this up from Bryant at Chatterley Luxuries uh, around the Black Friday uh, sort of time. Uh, he listed this as a new uh, exclusive and uh, I decided that I would actually uh, take it. And if you have a look here, just let me show you here. If I can get this to focus in, you'll see 18 of 25. So there are only 25 of these available and I have number 18 there. But I do have a bit of a soft spot, not only for Arco material, celluloid, but also this wild material. And I have a number of wild or wild side materials uh, in, in pens. The next pen actually, which strange enough, I picked up a couple of days prior to the Black Friday sale. I, I saw that this and also the Jade, which I've uh, showcased in, in other currently inked videos, uh, were on sale at Chatterley. So I decided I would buy the Jade and this one. And I hadn't realized that, unfortunately, a couple of days later, the Wild would have uh, appeared for sale. If it had, I probably would have waited for my purchases. And I may not have even got the, the this or the Jade. And I may have gone for the Wild. So I probably would have just stuck with two. So, Bryant, if you're watching this video, damn you. Because uh, you got another pen out of me. And uh, I, I'm, I am actually happy, to be honest. I like this material. I like it a lot. It's a really beautiful blue material. It reminds me a little bit of the... Um, blue Stardust from Conway Stewart, although this doesn't have any glitter in it. But you can see around here, this part here has a huge amount of depth in that resin. It is resin, it's not celluloid. And uh, this pen, like the, the uh, Wild, has a number eight size Magic Flex or Super Flex nib. Uh, when I say Magic Flex, Magic Flex is the ASC nib. Uh, Superflex is the Wild Eversharp nib. Now they are both uh, part of the same company uh, or same group, Pen Family. So it is the same nib, it's just laser etched differently. And then you have, have here a very large uh, Ebonite feed, and uh, these are pneumatic filling pens. But I I do like these Wild Eversharps a lot. I do 
like their size. Uh, they're more so their girth than than the length. Like these are a little bit shorter than maybe my ASC Bolognas, but not not a huge amount. But I, I I do like these. They just seem to be the right size for me. I tend to like uh, longer, heavier, more girthy pens, and for me, they it just ticks all the boxes. Now. This pen is also inked up this week, and this is the Visconti. It's the last Templar, Jacques de Molay. Uh, there's a number of different uh, Templar series pens that Visconti did, and to be honest, most of them really do not look as good as this. Uh, there is uh, a, um, not a last Templar, but a Templar series pen that has uh, red rubies uh, as a cross, and there is also, I think, a version of the Jacques de Molay that has red rubies as well. Uh, I honestly prefer this one. I think this really makes it look much better. You have all of this chain mail here. Uh, and you can see like the armor here. It has all these like rivets going on. Okay, they're fake rivets, but it's more decoration. But you can see here, Jacques de Molay, who was the last Templar. Uh, before he was executed by uh, the uh, French, is it president or uh, prime minister, perhaps? I'm not sure. I think it may have been president. But uh, this this comes with a number six size Visconti nib, which is a Bock nib. It's the old style 23 cap palladium. It's a medium nib with an ABS plastic feed. But I just love this pen. It's a beautiful pen. And I, I'm always in awe when I write with this. It's uh, I always have it inked up with the same ink, Diamine Earl Grey, and I, I think if if there was a a better grey ink that I could put in there in terms of name, uh, a noble grey ink, then maybe I would do that. I think there may be another one. Uh, I think somebody mentioned to me at some point that there was another brand of ink that had a noble gray or something but uh and until now sort of like diamine old gray is really what i i tend to it's my go-to gray ink the next one i have inked up which uh, i believe i may have had inked up last week as well uh certainly i have had it inked up for a while is this one and this is a honker of a pen if if the jacques de Molay wasn't a honker uh, this certainly is. Uh, it's made of uh, ebonite. It's also made of Yerushi lacquer. And they basically layer and then sand down each layer. And eventually they get like this bamboo style effect going on. Depending on how they sand it. And uh, this is the Danny Trio. And it's the bamboo story. And if I unscrew that, you'll see here it has a number 8 size Danny Trio nib. Um, I believe that's an Ebonite feed. I've never actually, I'm pretty sure it is an Ebonite feed. Uh, it looks Ebonite to me. It doesn't look like it's ABS plastic. Uh, but this is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's an eyedropper pen. So it's not a cartridge converter. It's not a piston or a power vac or a pneumatic filler. You can see the artist's uh, signature there as well. Uh, this is an Akatamanuri like finish, and I just love this pen. So that pen is also inked up this week as well. And then a much smaller pen, and, and to be honest, this is not a small pen, uh, but this is the Twisby Vac 700R. It's the Iris model, and this is uh, the Iris being the rainbow color effect that you get there, and you can see. I bring this up here to the camera you'll see that rainbow effect going on there around the Twisby logo and you'll also see hopefully the rainbow colored nib there as well so this uh, and also around here as well around the base of the section uh, and I think if you look at it here I think the rod is also rainbow colored as well so I, this is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's a number six size. It's a steel nib. Uh, this one's a broad nib, but I just uh, I'm finding lately that I am really loving writing with the Twisby Vac 700Rs. Uh, I had one 700R 
uh, and then I bought five 700R irises. And yeah, I know why would why would anybody buy five? Uh, yes, it's. I guess it's a. I think we all probably realise if you're watching these videos, this is uh, a little bit of an addiction going on. And um, yeah, it, it, why would I need five Twisby Vax 700Rs? Well. Uh, I guess uh, for me, I decided I would probably retire my Diamond 580s. Uh, they have a, like a 5.5 size nib or maybe a 5 nib. Uh, I typically don't write with them now. And I figured that I I do write with a 700R. So I figured that I would replace them and, and actually probably um, either sell or maybe even just let go and give away my 580s. And... Uh, so that's uh, my plan anyway. The next pen I have inked up, which uh, I did, I'm pretty sure have inked up last week, was the Classic Pens LB5. This is the Kauseki. Uh, and I think Kauseki stands for Mineral Ore. And uh, so this was, it's a Classic Pens LB5, but it was made by Sailor. So you've got Sailor, you've got their LB5, and then you've got Kauseki. And this is 47 of 50. So I bought this, bought this from um, Sarge, the One Man Pen Show in London, uh, at the London Pen Show. And uh, I'm really glad I did. The The prices of these, although it started to skyrocket a little bit when I bought this, so I didn't pay rock bottom price for it, but they have skyrocketed ever since, just like um, Omar's Arco. So... It's very difficult to get one of these for a really good price. Uh, probably the only way you're going to find that is if somebody doesn't know what they have or and they're selling it, or if maybe in a state sale, or if you're maybe doing a swap with another pen, in which case if somebody, if you have a, a pen that, that somebody really, really wants, then uh, there is a chance that you might be able to do a swap see there. Now, this has a Sailor King of Pen Nib, because I did say it was made by Sailor. And you can see that there. It's a 21 cat gold uh, nib with an ABS plastic feed. But these just write really, really well for me. I, I do love them. And uh, this is why I've picked up so many more Sailor King of Pens since. Because I know that I'm not going to splash out the, this, the Sailor... King of Pens, or, or the Classic Pens, sorry, LB5s. Uh, I think when I purchased this, it was around about 1900 uh, You won't find them any lower than 2500 And honestly, I've seen them selling for 31 to $3,300. So uh, the, the prices really are, are tight, very, very heavy prices to pay. Uh, these are all limited in each color to 50. So it is a small limited edition run. And I think that's also what's keeping the price high as well. The next pen I have here inked up is a Santini Italia. And this is the Libra model. And this is in the Ambra. Now, the Ambra is a Conway Stewart material. Now, it is a resin, it's not a celluloid. But you can see there is some translucency there. And you can see the inner piston here as well. So this is a really beautiful uh, cracked ice amber uh, sort of resin. Um, this has an 18 karat gold Santini nib. Uh, this one I got as a medium nib. It's got an ebonite feed there. Uh, these are, it's a piston filling pen. It, these are really, really comfortable uh, to write with. They're somewhat light. They're not super light, uh, but they are not heavy either. So uh, I do like writing with that a lot. And then I have another one inked up. And this again is another Santini Italia. This is the Libra again, but this is in the laurel color. So green laurel. Um, this, again, is a beautiful pen. So I have this one inked up. You can just see there. So again, this is a resin, but you can see the chatoyance going on in that resin. It's just amazing. So if I unscrew the cap, you'll see here 
again, it's another 18 karat gold nib, but you will see there that uh, that is a fine nib. And uh, again, I like it. I like the, the size and I like the weight of this. To me, this just feels about right. So uh, it's not too heavy and it's not too light. It's just about right. Yes. So uh, again, that, that one is, uh, I have inked up again. So uh, that that is uh, in my currently inked for this week. And then I have uh, this one, which is a Visconti. And it's a Medici. And it's an Il Magnifico. And this is made of solid silver. So it's AG925 and solid marble so this is a pen that feels cold in winter to write with and very heavy and you'll also see here again the section is silver uh, this is a number six size Visconti Bock nib it's a 23 cap palladium medium nib uh, I just love the size the weight the heftiness of this pen this really for me it, I like large pens but i like heavy pens and uh, i know some people say that a lot of people when they get into the hobby they always sort of equate a heavy pen as being expensive that's not the case um i just like a heavy pen because of the weight in my hand and made of solid silver and and solid marble or granite this is a heavy pen and then the last pen I have here is another Visconti, another Medici, another Il Magnifico. This is in the Lapis Lazuli. Again, this is made of solid silver and a marble stone. So this, although you say, ha, that's, that's gold, that's not silver. Actually, it's solid silver with a gold vermeil. And uh, if I remove the cap, you'll see, again, a solid silver, gold vermeil section here. And... A number six size Visconti nib, and this is a medium nib. Um, now, this is an, one of the newer 18 carat gold nibs, not the 23 carat palladium nibs. Uh, but I, I just love this pen. I love it a lot, and this really like it's it's a beautiful pen. I think when I initially saw this pen on adverts. Uh, the stock photos, I thought this looked a bit overpowering, a bit too bling, all of this gold. Uh, but honestly, I, I think it works well with the blue. And and I do love this pen. So uh, I do think that I will have to um, uh, sort of keep this inked up for a bit, I think. And again, I just love writing with uh, these pens because they are quite weighty. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Wild Eversharp Deco Band Oversize in the Wild. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, first off, you're going to see that this is a very, very wet pen. Um, it is a wet pen. It, the, the nib is very wet. All of these Wild Eversharp Deco Bands uh, nibs, the oversized nibs, are always super wet. So this is a while ever sharp. It's a deco band. And uh, it's the wild. And it's a medium 18 cat gold nib. And this is the Chatterley exclusive or Chatterley luxuries exclusive. Uh, the ink in here is Lamy Black which I think really complements that really dark blackness of the pen. And the next pen is the Wild Eversharp Deco Band Oversize, and this is the Positano Blue. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, this is quite a wet writing nib. So this is the Wild ever sharp it's a deco band and it's the oversize and it's the positano now 
This is a medium 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Rora and Klinger. And it is Blue Mare. Now, I do know that that blue doesn't quite match the blue of the pen, but it is a light blue that I do like a lot, and I decided I would ink that up uh, with me this week. The next pen is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. So we'll do an ink swatch. And... This is quite a wet writing nib, and this is a nib that I did adjust myself. Uh, out of the box, it was very dry with a grey ink, and grey inks typically are quite dry. So this is a Visconti, and it's the Last Templar, and it's the Jacques de Molay. Uh, it's a medium uh, 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here is the only ink that I put in here, Earl Grey. Uh, and I actually forgot it's, to put its diamine. But that is, uh, I think I actually, I did try at one point, uh, one of the pilot of Washizuku, I think it was Kirisami or... I may have even actually tried Mont Blanc Oyster Grey in there, and I just found that neither really wrote as nice as I would like. And Diamine Earl Grey, uh, I tried again, and it was just a winner for me. The next pen is the Danny Trio Bamboo Story. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a fine nib pen. So it really does put down a fine line. Uh, you're not going to get much more than that. Now, I did actually want, ideally, like I wasn't into fine nibs when I bought this, and I was very sceptical of actually buying it with a fine nib, and I was kind of wanting to swap it out for medium nib, but I couldn't find a, a lovely number eight size Danny Trio nib where I could swap it out with. Um, but to be honest, I'm, I, I've actually embraced it. I've smoothed the nib out a little bit more, so it's less uh, toothy for me, and, and I like how it writes. So this is the Danny Trio Bamboo Story, and it's in an Akka Tamanuri uh, Yurushi. Now, the nib in here is a fine, it's a little bit bouncy, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And when I say bouncy, you can get a little bit more line variation out of it. It's not a flex nib. Now, the ink in here is diamine, poppy, red, which is a beautiful, vibrant red ink from diamine. The next pen is a Twisby Vac 700R Iris or Rainbow. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now you can immediately see this is a more broader nib, and, and it is actually a broad nib. So this is the Twisby Vac 700R Iris. And it's a broad steel nib. And then the ink in here is diamine. And it's fire embers. Which is a little bit of a orangey red kind of ink colour. The next pen is the Classic Pens LB5. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a medium nib, but it's an Asian medium because it's a Sailor King of Pen nib. So for me, this writes more like a Western fine. But 
again, I've been liking more finer nibs lately, so that doesn't bother me. So this is the classic pens LB5 in the Kaoseki. Now, Kaoseki basically means mineral ore. Now, technically, it is a medium nib, but it's an Asian nib, and it's also a 21 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Pilot's Iroshizuku, and it's Sakushi, which also translates to horse's tail. The next pen here is the Santini Italia Libra in the Ambra. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I have to say that these nibs, this is a flexi nib. It's not just a standard 18 cat gold nib. Uh, but this has quite a bit of flex to it. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So this is the Santini Libra. And it's in the Ambra. Now this is a medium. And it's, and you can see here how much that, that will flex to. So it's called the Flexi. Now I do have problems with this railroading a little bit, but I'm just going to flood the feed a little bit. And uh, it's an 18 cat gold nib. Now, what you can see here is how much that nib will flex. So if you really want a modern style flex nib, and, and I say that loosely because I know I always get people that will attack me uh, when I say it's a flex nib. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is a flex nib. Um, no two words about it. Like going from that small thin line to this, it's definitely a flexy nib. So um, I, I call it a flex nib or a flexy nib. Um, certainly Santini called it a flexy nib. The next pen here is another Santini Libra, and this is in the Laurel. Uh, the Laurel is a green color, and uh, this uh, is just a beautiful pen. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a finer nib. It's actually a fine nib. And uh, the ink in here is a little bit more on the drier side as well. You can see this is really putting down a fine line. So this is the Santini. And it's the Libra. And it's the Lowell. And this is a fine, flexi, 18 cat gold nib. So you can see the difference between the medium and the fine. So you can see really that this will flex as much as the medium. It's just that it starts off with a finer line. But this I really do like. So this is inked up with uh, Diamine. I just realized I didn't write the ink there. A Diamine um, and this is Meadow. So let me go back and write the ink. I think I got a bit carried away with that flexing. Uh, the ink in here is uh, Diamine, and it's ochre. There you go. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is quite a dry ink, and like you'll probably see that here that it's not it's not super wet so this is a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico and it's a medium 23 cat palladium nib and then the ink in here is a Pelican Edelstein 
and it's Star Ruby. Which really is a beautiful pinkish red or reddish. Is it reddish pink? or is, It's more of a pink, to be honest, Star Ruby. And then the last pen, again, is another Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I've broken with my normal tradition. I've got a lilac colored uh, ink in here. So this, you can see, doesn't match the blue in the pen. But it's not that far off. So this is a Visconti Medici Il. Oh, and I'm actually running out. I'm running out of ink. See, Il Magnifico. Now, I may run out again because I've just done the Paravac plunger and it is out of ink. But I'm going to try and not re-ink this up. So it's the Lapis Lazuli. Let's see if we can get through this without having to dip the nib. It's a medium. It's the new 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. And then the ink in here is Diamine. And it's Lavender. I would like to put a uh, bluish uh, lavender style or violet style ink in there. So I'm glad I just managed to actually get through all of that because I don't really want to have to ink it up again with the same ink. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Wild Eversharp Deco Band oversized in the wild. It's a Chatterley Luxuries exclusive. And this is in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with Lamy Black. We have a Wild Eversharp Deco Band oversized in the Positano Blue. Uh, this is in a medium 18 cat gold nib, inked up with raw and Klinger Blue Mare. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay in a medium 23 cat palladium nib, inked up with uh, Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Danny Trio Bamboo Story. Uh, this is in an Akatamanuri uh, in a fine 18 cat gold nib, inked up with Diamine Poppy Red. We have a Twisby Vac 700R in a steel nib. Uh, this is a broad nib uh, inked up with Diamine Fire Embers. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the Kalseki with a medium 21 cat gold nib inked up with Pilot Orochizuku Sakushi. We have a Santini Libra and this is the Amber in a medium flexi 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have a Santini Libra in the Laurel with a fine flexi 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico and this is in a medium 23 cat palladium nib inked up with Pelican Edel Sign Star Ruby. And then we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli inked up with a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Lavender. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.